Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you all have a great 2018. Today's topic is going to be directly driven by comments and questions and remarks that have been posted in many of my comments that I receive on the videos and offline messages as well. I do take a look at those. Uh, the question is, how do you index material in a mill? It's easy to drill a hole through a center of a round part, but when you need to turn it 90 degrees or 15 degrees or make an eight hole pattern, how do you do that without an expensive indexer? Well, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and I hope the creativity of what you see in the shop today will drive your creativity and say, hey, I can improve on that or modify that or apply that here, there, everywhere. Let's take a walk out to the mill. I'll show you what I came up with and hope that you can use it. Let's take a walk. All right, guys, before we touch off on very creative ways to index your parts in the mill, I think it's only fair to show you some commercially available items. This is called a spin indexer. You can use it on a surface grinder. You can use it on a mill. I'm sure there's a variety of different places you can use this. There are 36 holes around the face of this part. And as you can see, it does spin. Around the back, there are 10 holes here that make up the 10th incremental divisions in between the 36 holes in the front. So for each hole, there's 10 options, which gives you 360 options, or 360 degrees worth of capability in one degree increments. This is the type of unit that you would use to make something uh, hex or round or octagonal or whatever shape you want from starting with the round part. And just for visual reference, whenever I work with this particular unit, I put tape on the holes that I know are going to be plugged when it's coming around so I can get a quick visual reference whether or not my hole is blocked and I'm working at 90 degree increments or 60 degree increments or whatever. Okay, this is a spin indexer. This is a not a super expensive option, but if you're not into writing checks and spending money, this is not something you're going to want to buy for just a couple of pieces. All right, let's go to option two. Collet blocks. These particular blocks are designed to be used with 5C collets. And a 5C collet is what fits in my engine lathe here, so uh, that works out very well. These are keyed, so as you feed them in, they will key. And as you squeeze them in your vise, this will give you four position options if you want to do a square. This one will give you six. Now the collet does protrude out the back of the block and is normally retained with a spanner nut and a spanner wrench. There is also a quick disconnect cam type option for this unit that you tighten it down and just strictly activate the cam and it closes the collet in the front. Now I'm just going to go out on a limb here and see if I can ruffle some feathers by saying if you're going to use the hex block don't squeeze it in your vise this way. I am not a big fan of anything that if it were to dislodge instantly becomes loose. Know your equipment, put it on a surface plate, put a pin in here, check the height, check everything, make sure it's all centered, and then put it up against an angle plate and check it again. That way you know when you squeeze it in your vise this way, the way I would highly recommend you squeeze it in your vise, that it's registering on these ribs and you know that these ribs are precision ground to the center of your block. This is an affordable option and a very nice option to have. So this block will give you uh, three or six sides depending on how many times you spin it. And I'm going to show you a little trick here that you might uh, say, hey, that's pretty clever. This block will also give you four options, but it will also give you eight options. What happens when you put a square in a V block? it turns into 45 degrees. Now back to my don't hold it that way. If I had to do this, the 45 degree option that you see, the V-block on a square, 45 incremental, you can also put this in your vise this way. That way you have a very positive registration area against the back side of your vise and all this is doing is holding the block in the V-blocks. I will put that on the machine and I will show you exactly what that looks like so you know what I'm talking about. 
Now on to the budget material. If you don't feel like spending a lot of money and you have a stock rack, make yourself an index plate. This little guy here looks like Swiss cheese, but since it's mine, I know what I'm looking at. It has three rings on it. You can see the three rings by the Sharpie marker that's wearing off quite rapidly. Now these three rings, the outside, I'm going to find the very top. It's also an eight-sided object. Let's see if we can figure out which way is up. Okay, this way is up. You can see the outer ring will give you five position options or ten position options depending on what side is up. Now if you want the option, simple option, you put the pins through the part like this and you get your crazy glue out or your double stick tape. A lot of you guys like the crazy glue and now you have a billion indexing options for your part. That works quite well. There is also an outrigger bar that I've created for this unit. Come on, it'll go on. There you go. That gives you a nice long surface to run an indicator on if you don't want to bounce across a couple of pins. And the way these holes are drilled, this bar will work with any hole pattern on this. This offers you a square pattern, an octagonal pattern, a six-sided hex pattern, a pentagon five-sided pattern, and each of the patterns can be flipped or rotated accordingly to uh, possibly double up. So the five will give you ten, the six will give you twelve, uh, and well the four will already give you eight, but it'll also be applicable this way. I'm actually going to stick that on a piece of material and show you what it looks like set up in the machine. And I'm going to walk over to the bridge port right now and show you another technique that you'll probably see more often than not when time is uh, a factor. Let's take a walk. All right, here's your workpiece. For reasons unknown, we cannot put this workpiece in a collet. We can't put it in a collet block. We can't put it in an indexer. It might be too big, too long, or whatever. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can take this and move this around. One of the most popular ways that I've seen and I continue to see is to put something on the outside of your part, like a V-block, but hang something on the outside of your part that you can use as a reference. Now we have two vertical surfaces and a horizontal surface that you can use to index your part. But make sure that before you start, naturally you register the part in some degree of repeatable format. What I have here is an adjustable parallel with a rubber band around it and you can see right now this is a 1-2-3 block adjustable parallel with the rubber band. Watch it move. See it? Alright, this is tight. That's nice and tight. Now we have a good registration. You can do the exact same thing if you want to rotate this 90 degrees. Let's put a mark on that just so you know what's vertical. How, how's that for ugly? Welcome to 2018, huh? Be careful you maintain down pressure on this because that rubber band around that adjustable parallel is going to want to lift just like it just did. And once you've got that all squared away and you want to go to horizontal, you have a surface you can indicate if you need to, or you can cheat with the adjustable parallels again. There you go. 90 degrees. Another trick that I've seen, you can put this end in a V block so that you have your 45 degree reference. And this one you're going to laugh at, but believe it or not, I've seen it done a hundred thousand times. Or maybe not that many. I've actually seen guys hang complete vices on the end of their part and that way they have a tremendous reference surface to work from so that they can use a protractor, a sign bar, a sign plate, angle gauges, whatever.
but don't be afraid to do that. It's not unorthodox, and if it gets the job done, then have at it. Now here comes the little plate that I showed you over on the bench. Now I know a lot of you guys are big fans of crazy glue, and that's a viable option if you don't have a bunch of pieces to do. Time-wise, you can get away with it and do it. But I have a piece of double-faced tape on here, and I'll tell you that 3M now makes some double-faced tapes that you just will not believe how strong they are. It's the kind of tape that they glue the glass into skyscrapers with, so it's made to go the distance. I'm going to visually line this up on the back of this. I'll just give it a little push. Now you can see the variety of holes that you now have. You can set your bar on top of that and indicate it, or you can put the bar through the holes. Let's go for 90 degrees right now. can indicate that. Flip it for your 180 option. You can also use the adjustable parallel directly underneath the hex. And this does not have to be centered on that because 45 degree rotation is 45 degree rotation. If something out here is going to be, I mean you can watch the end of the bar. The bar is flat at zero. When you turn it 45, it's 45 here, it's 45 here. So it really doesn't matter where this plate is on the end of your part. But don't use the plate for axial positioning for that purpose. Have something else up your sleeve. One of the questions that I received was how do you index a part nine times? Well, you grab a piece of material like this, you make a nine hole bolt circle, and you do exactly what I'm doing here. Use pins, use a cheater bar, off you go. It's a great idea. It takes about an hour to make one. And actually, I will post a picture of the dimensions for these holes at the end of this video so if you're interested in making one of these and sticking it in your box have at it. Let's assume for some reason you cannot use if this is a drilling operation and you drill a hole in it let's assume that you cannot use a pin in that hole for reference of how to rotate your part. Using a pin in an already drilled hole is a very good way to index material in a machine. If you've already put a flat on your part, using a protractor or an angle block against that flat to determine the next sets of flats in line is also a very good way to do it. When you have an even number of flats, like this octagonal shape on here, it doesn't take a whole lot of work to bring that in, provided you know the difference or the distance between your flats and the diameter of your material. Just subtract one from another and remove half that amount of material on one side and the other side will fall right in once you hit your number as far as being centered is concerned. When it comes to an odd number of features, we're going to set this piece up right now and we're going to draw lines on the face of this little stud and that is on there with a double stick tape which is really tough material. And we're going to test this theory. We're going to go with the outermost holes. The outermost holes on this plate are a five hole pattern and I can use the holes closest together, I could use every other hole, it really doesn't matter, provided each time you index it, you put the holes in a relatively identical position in the next position. Let's see if we make any sense there. Now what I'm saying for the outside holes, you could use these two holes provided you continue to use the outermost holes all the way around or you can skip a hole and you can use those holes all the way around provided you use the same type for each hole if you change up and use the hole in between you're going to get a different uh, result so let's see what happens
you'll notice that I'm stopping on the OD of my part and not on the block. If the block is off center to the part, you'll still get the feature you're looking for. But if you're milling, the feature may be off center to the axis of the of the slug that you start with. Okay, there you go. That is perfect five sides on that. I like it. When you initially set this up, this particular block here is designed for parts under one inch in diameter. Use feeler gauges or whatever you need to to assure that the distance between your slug and the outermost pins, or the closest pins, is symmetrical all the way around. And any feature that you would use this to work on your part for is going to come out centered as you would hope it would. That is dent proof aluminum. Only available in Texas. Alright guys, that's it. Handy little plate to have. If you don't have an indexer, you don't want to spend the money on an indexer, make one. Uh, I've also got a video on making super accurate cuts on the mill, super accurate angle cuts on the mill. If you want to see the logic behind making a hole pattern or a bolt pattern or an angle gauge, take a look at that one as well. Thank you very much for watching. That's all I got. Good luck. Okay, well attaching something to the end of your round stock when you're trying to index it and using that as your index marker is a really solid way to rotate a part precisely without having an indexer. Uh, what I showed you, the little aluminum plate and bar parallel thing, works really good and I hope that you realize that that is just a concept. You don't have to have a plate that looks exactly like that, but the whole pin idea for driving a plate that you can register is a very solid concept. So take it, utilize it, modify it as you see fit, and get through your job. I hope you enjoyed that. That's uh, something I've been wanting to do for a while. And to the guys that have asked those questions, if that doesn't clear it up for you, by all means, shoot me a message and we'll address it offline. Anyway, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Happy New Year, guys. I'm out.